What's going on people, my name is Antoine, this is ATM Tech and welcome to the channel. So back in September, Samsung launched their Galaxy S21 range. It was met with some positive reception and Samsung recorded one of their best quarters ever. Now the phones have been out for a few months now and chances are if you're a hardcore Samsung fan, you wouldn't pick yours up straight away. But at the same time, there's a lot of people whose contracts might be coming up to an end or maybe you're just in the market for a new phone. Maybe you've got an S10 that's due an upgrade or you've got an iPhone 10 or 11 and you fancy making that change over to Samsung. So the new lineup can be a little bit confusing so if you want some help trying to decide which is the right phone for you and make your decision well hopefully I'm here to help you with that today so this year we have three phones there's the s21 s21 plus and s21 ultra so we're going to kick things off with size display and design so the s21 has a 6.2 inch screen with a 1080p display the s21 plus has a 6.7 inch screen also with a 1080p display and then you've got the s21 ultra with a 6.8 inch screen this time with a quad hd display all three of them use super amoled display technology technology which basically means they're bright and vibrant and some of the best displays you can get on the market. All three of them do have displays with variable refresh rates of up to 120 hertz but there are just a couple differences between the models. So the S21 and S21 Plus is variable from 30 hertz up to 120 hertz whereas the S21 Ultra is variable from 1 hertz all the way up to 120 hertz. So when we're talking about design the S21 has a flat screen made out of Gorilla Glass with a plastic body around the back. The S21 Plus also has a flat screen with Gorilla Glass but this time with a glass body and then the S21 Ultra is a slightly curved display also with Gorilla Glass and also with a glass body around the back. So there is a difference in materials with the three phones. Now as all three phones are different sizes as you can expect they all have different size batteries. So the S21 has a 4000 milliamp battery, the S21 Plus has a 4800 milliamp battery and the S21 Ultra has a 5000 milliamp battery. I would say each battery is appropriate for the size of the phone and having used these phones for a while in real life I would say there's not a significant difference in battery life. The S21 Plus does fare slightly better than the other two but we're talking a difference of maybe half an hour to an hour and all three will get you through a full day very comfortably so one thing to point out before I move on to the next section one thing that really stood out to me is the fact that the s21 and the s21 plus only came with 1080p displays now considering that these are supposed to be flagships it was a little bit disappointing however I think there was a couple reasons for this so the first reason is to make the s21 ultra a bit more premium and to give it something that the other two don't have what I think is the other reason also so is when you look at the S20 series last year, although the S20 and S20 Plus both had quad HD displays, if you wanted to use them with the variable refresh rate, you had to drop that down to 1080p. So majority of people were using their phones at 1080p anyway. So theoretically this time around people aren't really missing out, but it is disappointing to not have the choice. So next we're moving on to performance. Now this section shouldn't take very long because in that department, all three phones do share a lot of the same components. So all three of them do use either the Snapdragon 888 processor or the Exynos 2100 depending on your region. Now, if you've been following Samsung over the last couple of years, you probably are aware of the discrepancies between the Snapdragon processor and the Exynos processor. Now, the difference between the two in the past has been pretty large, but from what I've seen so far, there haven't been as many reported differences or the differences aren't as large. Myself being in the UK, the phones I'm using are Exynos powered and I've experienced zero issues with them. So just putting that out there. So all three phones support 5G, however only the S21 Plus and the S21 Ultra support ultra wideband technology. Now I'm not the most clued up on ultra wideband technology, but essentially it's a super accurate, super high speed method for devices to communicate with each other. I know Mercedes is working on using ultra wideband technology to work with your phone to control your car. I thought it was worth pointing out which of the phones do and don't have ultra wideband technology because it will determine which phones can work with this. So this is the Galaxy Smart Tag Plus that uses ultra wideband technology to help you find it. I'll be doing a video on this very, very soon. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna check that out. In terms of RAM and storage, both the S21 and S21 Plus come with eight gigabytes of RAM with either 128 gigabytes or 250 gigabytes of storage. The S21 Ultra comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM, again in 128 gigabytes or 250 gigabytes of storage. But then there's also a model above that that comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. Having spent quite a lot of time with the S21 Ultra, I would only say it's worth going for the higher variants if you need the extra storage rather than for the RAM. 12 gigabytes of RAM is more than enough for this phone and you won't see any significant benefit or performance increase if you've got a version with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So something to consider. Also, elephant in the room, 
these phones do not have expandable storage. It's the first time since the S6 that Samsung flagships haven't had expandable storage. I'm sure there's all kinds of reasons as to why Samsung opted to remove this, but I'm struggling to come up with any good ones. iPhone users have never had expandable storage and they seem to be doing just fine. It just means you need to take a bit longer to sit and think about how much storage you actually need. Okay, so let's move on to the camera. So the camera is one area on paper that differentiates the phones. However, in actual practice, your results may vary and a lot of it will come down to personal preference. So I'm gonna preface this by saying the S21 and S21 Plus have have the same camera and the S21 Ultra has a different camera. So I'm gonna check my notes because there's a lot of numbers here. So the S21 and S21 Plus both have a 12 megapixel wide camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and a 64 megapixel zoom camera which can zoom three times optical and 30 times digital. And then on the front, you've got a 10 megapixel selfie camera. The S21 Ultra has a 108 megapixel wide camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera two 10 megapixel zoom cameras. One does three times optical zoom, the other one does 10 times optical zoom, and then they work together to do a 100 times digital zoom. And then on the front, you've got a 40 megapixel selfie camera. Now, Samsung do like to make a bit of fuss about their zoom capabilities. Again, 30 times on the S21 and S21 Plus, and then 100 times on the S21 Ultra. But you do not want to be zooming in and taking pictures at those distances. When you're zoomed in that much, you do get just a hot mess of pixels. But that being said, the results you get at 5, 10, and 15 times zoom are way better than what you'd get on a lot of other cameras. Now, the main sensor on the S21 Ultra is one of the largest sensors that you can find in a smartphone camera. Now, in this case, a larger sensor means larger pixels. So theoretically, the S21 Ultra should perform better in low light than the other two. The Ultra also has laser autofocus, which should make it easier locking onto things in low light. So what all three phones have in common are their camera features. Now, all three of them are able to shoot 8K video. Now, I don't know about you, but shooting 8K video itself isn't really that useful. I don't have an 8K TV, you might, but you probably don't. And 8K files themselves are massive. But being able to shoot 8K video doesn't unlock another feature called 8K Video Snap. 8K Video Snap allows you to go back into your video and pull out high resolution photos from that video. So this could be useful if you've recorded a great video and in that video there's a moment you'd love to capture. Rather than taking a low quality screenshot, the 8K Video Snap allows you to come away with a high quality photo. All three phones are able to shoot 4K video at 60 frames on the rear camera and the front camera. In the past, this has only been available on the rear camera, so it's nice to see Samsung bring it to the front camera as well. We very much live in a social media vlogging generation, so it's nice to see you can get the high quality video from the front facing camera. And then you've also got single take, a feature that uses AI to simultaneously capture photo and video. You end up with multiple results from all the different cameras, some slow-mo, some boomerangs, all shot at the same time. I feel like this is a feature that you're either gonna use all the time or you're gonna forget it exists. So now we're gonna move on to pricing, which is usually the part that helps people make their decisions. So pricing's a bit of an interesting topic this year because Samsung have taken the decision to actually reduce the prices on their phones this year. So before I go into pricing, I know a lot of you guys are from the US. I did have a look on the Samsung US website for prices, but the way you, are, you guys are set up, it was just confusing. So when I do figure out the prices, I will have them up on screen. So let me just check my notes. So the S21 comes in at £769, the S21 Plus comes in at £949, and then the S21 Ultra starts at £1,149. Now there's two main reasons why the prices are lower this year, especially with the S21 and S21 Plus. So although both the S21 and S21 Plus are flagships, they have compromised in some areas to help bring the price down. In the case of the S21, it's a plastic body and a 1080p screen. And then when the S21 Plus, although it's a glass body, again, it's a 1080p screen. But the main reason why the prices are lower, I think anyway, is to take the sting off the fact that these phones do not come with chargers. Yeah, if you didn't know that already, the phones do not come with chargers. Samsung are banking and hoping on the fact that you already have a charger that you can use. All three of them use USB Type-C charging. So if you've had a phone with USB Type-C in the past, you can use that to charge these phones, but just don't expect a brand new charger if you decide to buy one of these phones. Samsung did take the sting off a little bit by reducing the price of their chargers by about five to 10 pounds, depending on where you're shopping. Now is not having a charger make or break for you? 
because for a lot of people it is. I think Apple did definitely help by being the first to do this, but for a lot of people, getting a charger in the box is a bare minimum. It's having to buy a charger is a hassle. And if you are someone that does keep your phones for a while, there's a good possibility that you're using a charger that's kind of needs to go to the graveyard and you do want a new charger. So it is definitely something to consider. Samsung do also claim the environmental element of things. Obviously, if you already have a charger, then it's better to not have another charger. It cuts down on production and waste and all that stuff. But then where that doesn't make sense is that although the S series is Samsung's most profitable phones, they are not the highest volume of phones and they continue to push chargers with their A series, which do majority of their volume internationally. So Samsung are still putting out a stupid amount of chargers out there. So let's start to wrap things up. I'm gonna go through the main strengths and weaknesses of each phone and give each phone a verdict. So let's start with the S21. Its strength is a price. 7694, a Samsung flagship pretty good to me. Its weakness, however, is the compromises. You've got a plastic body and a 1080p display. So my verdict on this phone, let's call it the affordable flagship. Next, let's move on to the S21 Plus. Its strength, a nice big screen and great battery performance. Its weakness, again, going back to the screen, 1080p display. You want a bit more from a flagship these days. My verdict, solid all-rounder. And finally, the S21 Ultra. Its strengths, zero compromises, big battery, big screen, big camera, big RAM, big storage, big everything. They haven't held back on anything with this phone. It's weakness, the price. You are getting a lot, but you're also paying a lot. My verdict on this phone, has it all, does it all. Now, ultimately, the whole point of this video is to help you make your own decision as to which phone you should buy. But which phone do I personally recommend for most people? It's gotta be the S21 Plus. In terms of price, screen size, performance, I think it hits a happy medium between all the three. And there's really not loads between the S21 Plus and the S21 Ultra. I think Samsung shot themselves in the foot a little bit by making the Plus and the Ultra so close in screen size. Because ultimately, a lot of people can't tell the difference between a 1080p and a Quad HD display. And then a lot of people can't tell the difference between photos taken by the Plus and the Ultra. So when you consider the camera is one of the selling points of the Ultra and the Plus performs right behind it. You have to consider whether the Ultra is worth paying the extra money for. And I think for majority of people, it isn't. So that wraps things up. I had a really good time researching and putting this video together. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and click on that like button. It helps me out a lot and is really appreciated. And then go ahead in the comments down below and tell me which phone you think is the best out of the S21 range. But that's enough from me. My name is Antoine. This is ATM Tech and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.